What's going on YouTube Games here? Welcome back to Games Talks Movies. Well, today we are going to be talking about um, my top 5 favorite movies of 2022. The year has just ended with 2022 and we're a few days into 2023. But before we start um, watching and look and um, uh, seeing the future of the movies this year, I thought, let's look back on, it's time to look back on the films of last year and rank, um, my top five favorite movies of this year. But before we do that, there were a lot of films that came out this year, and I can't fit them all on a top five, um, all the films that I liked. And I have two honorable mentions. These are films, if you don't know, that um, are really good and I definitely would watch again. But uh, the films on my top five list are just a bit better. Um, and um, But these are films that I feel like are really fun. And those films are Minions Rise of Gru. And to get to paradise. These two films I feel like are they're really fun, um, for what they are trying to do. That's what they both have in common. Um, I know lots of the people uh lots of um people think the minions are kind of annoying and not really that funny. But me personally I really like the minions and um I really like what they did with minions Rise of Gru, I think it's one of my favorite Global Mio Minions movies that they have made. Um, and, um, just the animation and, um, the vibrant colors and, um, how they kept the focus on the Minions throughout the whole film and, um, was still keeping, uh, not a big story, but at least a story that you could focus on. Till the end, we're still having a bunch of minion hijinks, um, in, in shoe of it, um, uh, on top of that. So, um, what can I say? I really like the minions. Uh, uh, the number one goal of a movie is to entertain you, and that is what Minions Rise of Gru did. I rec really recommend it. Another honorable mention I had was Ticket to Paradise. Ticket to Paradise is a rom-com, which, um, is a love story, um, and it's about these, um, two parents who, um, find out their daughter, um, she's moving away, and, um, they find out that she's in love with someone, and they're really scared about it, so they try to sabotage, um, their daughter and try to um, travel to, um, where they live now to try to break them up. So, yeah, it's a pretty silly premise, but I really like about this movie is just like Minions Rise of Gru, um, even though it's different, it goes all in to its premise. Um, it's, um, sometimes rom-coms, these days can be very cheesy and use pop culture references um, from today that can be really distracting. Um, but I, what I really like about Ticket to Paradise is it's a story that uses yes, a lot of cliches from rom-coms. You're not really going to get anything new from rom-coms, but you still get... Um, uh, those old stuff, um, and a really well told story because mainly from the two performances of, um, George Clooney and Julia Roberts. They are also stars that used to star in, like, rom-coms and films from back in the day and they're back, um, from, for this modern age, um, rom-com and, um, all the cast, including them, bring the laughs and all the rom romance, uh, love and stuff that you would love to see in a movie like this. So, yes, yeah, so um, 
my two um honorable mentions for um the year. Um now let's get into finally my top five favorite movies of twenty twenty two. Coming in at number one is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Now, Guillermo del, T del Toro's Pinocchio uh, has some of the best stop motion movies, motion animation ever, I've ever seen. It's in stop motion, and um, I did not get a chance to review this movie, I'm sorry, but I have seen this movie and I really really like it, mainly for the stop motion, since it's so fluid, and really, um, is, um, still able to convey, convey those emotions through the animation, uh, stop motion animation, which is very impressive. Um, the story itself is very dark, which, um, uh, if you know the story of Pinocchio, the original, it is a story from, like, way back in the day. It's, it was very dark, and, um, they take these dark elements, um, but they're also, um, able to spread some of that magic and joy that, you know, um, from the story, um, in the Pinocchio character. Um, and, um, them being, and the lore and the ideas that they, um, explore here with, like, death and talking about, like, how, um, um, one life matters and, um, that, um, uh, uh, how to, like, live the life that you would love, to, um, that, uh, the best li life that you can, because life will be over soon, obviously. So you definitely want to take, um, as, um, much joy and love and, uh, have the best life as you can. And that lore, um, that they explore it with and the themes in that, I feel like are very well explored. Um, it's very fun, uh, because of the Pinocchio character. Um, Gregory Mann plays the part of Pinocchio. He does a very, very good job. And, um, yeah, it's just a very good drama, um, with comedy thrown in there with some of the best stop motion movie animation I've ever seen. But coming in at number four of my top five, favorite, um, movies of 2022 is The Fablemans. Um, The Fablemans is a movie, um, that is directed by the great Steven Spielberg. Um, he directed such movies as E.T., the, um, Jurassic Park, uh, movies, um, uh, Indiana Jones, and so on. And this time he's directing a movie about himself, a semi autobiographical uh, movie that explores his childhood and kind of how he grew up um, loving movies and where that came from. Um, I feel like this movie, uh, um, out of all the movies that I've tried to kind of convey the love of film, and, um, the, um, and how film can, uh, help you see things that you really can't see, um, without it. Um, I feel like this one does the best job. Um, the cinematography is beautiful. The, um, act acting, um, from all the cast, um, is great. And, um, 
it just does a really good job of showing how film can um, convey um, emotions and you can see things from it that you really can't see before. Uh, the mom and the dad character, I feel like they had a, um, their relationships with um, their kids and um, each other could have been explored more. If you've uh, seen my review, you've known that. But when it does focus on the film aspect of it, it is uh, so good. I really recommend it. Coming in at number three of my top five favorite movies of 2022 is Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. My most um, surprising movie that I would not think would be on this list, but it is. I think this is one of the most fun movies on this list for sure. Um, you've got uh, this character, Puss in Boots, who um, throughout the film, uh, he uh, sadly died and cuts up nine lives, and he died eight lives, and now he only has one life. Um... And he has to go on this adventure. Uh, there's a wishing star that's out there. And he has to try to get it. Um, uh, while all these uh, other villains are getting it. Uh, to try to get his uh, nine lives back. And I just feel like that's a very cool premise. But I didn't really think it was going to be executed all that well. I mean, as much as it is, um, I love this movie. Um, the animation, um, really helps, um, uh, convey the story and, uh, tell the story. The, it's a very vibrant animation style, very quick paced, um, uh, makes you feel like you're very in the movie. And with these characters, which is awesome, um, there's lots of fairy tale aspects of it, um, that, um, are not just there, they're actually all used for the story to make it even more fun than it, um, could be. Um, and, um, there are multiple villains in this movie. There's Jack Horner who um, is from the North, North Sri Rhyme. There's uh, Goldilocks with her three bears as another villain. And there's also this wolf called Death. And um, that's a lot of villains. Um, but I think they um, did a really good job of um, giving this spotlight to every single one of them. Um, and... Um, kind of use them both, I mean, all of them, um, including Puss in Boots, um, and all the characters to kind of, um, uh, tell the message of, like the Gamma Del Toro's, um, Pinocchio, um, uh, that one life can really matter, and what you do with that life can, um, um, and how you, live that life can, um, uh, really have an impact, um, and, um, just to enjoy it, um, and I feel like, um, that message is definitely not glossed over. The stuff that they use to tell that message makes it clear for the, um, children especially, which is great, and it just makes it very clear and makes it also in a very entertaining way. Um, it's one of my favorite animated movies I've seen in a long time. But there is one that I feel like is just a little bit better on a story level. Um, and that um, at number two is Turning Red. Now, Turning Red is a new... A uh, Pixar movie that came a little bit earlier in 2022, um, and is about, um, 
this girl called Mei Mei, who um go basically goes through this um uh adventure with puberty and um uh which they can they tell it by she's turning into this red panda and then she has to kind of I do um figure out how to live with this identity as this red panda. And like I said before they uh the whole message of this movie is like puberty and kind of um how to deal with teenagehood and um stuff like that and um they really um what i really like about this movie and the message of this movie is they tell it in a lot of uh different ways um the humor in this movie i feel like um is um very um spot um on um uh the humor in this movie definitely um uh, gives you a chuckle, and, um, the animation, while, um, I was saying a lot of this animation on this list is great, um, and, uh, definitely one of the best I've seen in years, um, the, um, animation in this is definitely focused, um, a lot on telling this story with kind of this Chinese, um, uh, culture, uh, uh, representation, and, um, that's used in the animation as well, and so, yes, that, um, definitely makes it, um, uh, kind of, um, up on the top of my top five favorite movies of this year, um, but yes, guys, there's one movie that, rules it all. While I do love these movies and I, every movie that I mentioned on this list, I definitely recommend you to go check out. But there is one movie that did impress me a lot. And that movie, coming in at number one, is Elvis. Now, Elvis, as you know, is the um king of rock. He's the... Uh, superstar, uh, that, um, is, uh, was famous in the 60s and, um, 70s, and, um, he populated the idea of pop, uh, pop music and rock and roll and all that stuff, and, um, I'm a really big, um, sucker for, um, biopics. I really like, um, watching people's real-life stories play out. And, um, I really like a biopic if it focuses a lot of its time going into that brain of the main character and kind of exploring, uh, a lot of who that person was as a person, um, other than just going, um, through all this stuff that they did, which, um, uh, could be very good, obviously, but if you have a deep understanding of the character and you go through all that stuff, it could, uh, really get you invested in this, um, in the movie, and, um, I think that's what Elvis does very well, uh, better than most biopics I've ever seen, um, Austin Butler is the uh, person who plays Elvis, and he does some of the best acting I have seen in a couple years. Um, he brings this character, the Elvis, to life. Um, he, well, not character, because he embodies this, um, this um, person um, with so much realistic charm and charisma, and, um, if you know Elvis at all, if you've seen him, um, uh, the real Elvis, um, I don't think you'll be able to tell him apart at all, uh, from the real Elvis to, um, uh, Austin Butler's Elvis, because he just embodies this character 
so well. Um, a lot of people don't like Tom Hanks as the character in this movie as um, Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Um, but I really enjoy him. I think he does a really good job. Um, Colonel Tom Parker, if you don't know, was a really not nice man. I won't spoil what he does in the movie. But I think Tom Hanks um, does a really good job of that um, con man aspect of that character and trying to make um, Connor Tom Parker uh, kind of seem like a nice guy. Um, um, but also um, not uh, be a nice guy um, for what uh, he's doing. He, um, he definitely... Um, uh, since Tom Hanks is a very lovable actor, is very able to play those, uh, uh, make you as the audience, as well as Elvis, one, uh, manipulate us to, uh, think that he is a very good fit and a very good manager, um, when, um, in reality, he is not. But yes, guys, that is my top five favorite movies of 2022. But I love to have a good um, discussion with you guys in the comment section down below what your guys' favorite 2022 movies are. Let me know in the comment section down below. Also in the comments, let me know um, what movies you think I should review. New movies, old movies. Um, I would love to, um, review movies, um, that you want me to review so then I can tell you my opinion if a movie is worth watching or not. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification after you subscribe so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.